Hey guys, Miss Miklos here with Section 7.3 Function Operations. And the good news is we have these four operations and we know them really well. You guys have known them forever. So we're just really going to be doing things that you've already done with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Really the only brand new concept that we're going to be dealing with today is this new operation called composition. And I just want you guys to know composition is really just a fancy way of saying substitution. So all that is is using substitution. Okay, so let's get going. Um, problem number one here. f of x and g of x are given to us, and our directions are f of x plus g of x. And my hope is that you guys could have actually done this without even watching this portion of the lecture. Because all I'm going to do is do 2x plus x plus 1. So I'm substituting 2x in for f of x. I'm not really substituting, I guess. I, I just know f of x equals 2x. And g of x is equal to x plus 1. Now I need to look and see if I can add my like terms. 2x plus x is 3x plus 1. And I'm done. There's nothing more I can do there. Part B is very similar. Unfortunately, this one tends to make me sad because lots of people miss a problem like this on our test, and I think it's pretty simple and straightforward, so that's why it makes me sad. So, why do people miss this problem? Let's get into it. So, I'm going to do 2x minus the quantity x plus 1, and you guys are probably already thinking that people forget to distribute the negative, and you're correct. That is the biggest mistake I see. So I want to make sure to take my time here. So when I distribute this negative, I get negative x minus 1. When I add my like terms together, 2x minus x is x. There's nothing I can find with negative 1. So x minus 1 is our answer. Part C is dealing with multiplication, and once again, you guessed it, I'm going to write 2x for f of x and x plus 1 for g of x. And um, one thing that I want to mention, if you notice, whenever I'm substituting stuff in, I tend to use parentheses, and that really helps me out in taking my time, making sure that I'm distributing things correctly, and um, it's not necessary in every problem, but for example, if we look back at the subtraction problem, if I hadn't written parentheses, I would have gotten that incorrect. So it's a good habit whenever I substitute to use parentheses. Now obviously in this case, I don't really need parentheses around the 2x because that's a monomial. And when I'm distributing a mon, or I just answered my own question here, when I'm multiplying a monomial times a binomial, I know I'm going to distribute. So I end up getting 2x squared plus 2x. Lastly for D, we're dealing with division. So I'm going to write 2x over x plus 1. And you guys should remember this from Algebra 1, but this is what we call a rational expression. We know rational deals with fractions. Um, and we're actually going to spend a bunch of time looking at these again back in Chapter 9. But the most common mistake is people just love to cross things out and go, oh, an x and an x, let's cancel them. But unfortunately, we cannot do that. Okay, and we'll get into that later. But it's because this x plus 1 is a factor. It's combined because of this addition. And I do not have a similar factor in the numerator. So my answer here is simply 2x over x plus 1. Now at this point you guys are probably thinking, yes, this is going to be the easiest homework assignment ever, and some of it will be, however, we're going to step it up a little bit from here on out. Looking at number two here, f of x equals 3x, g of x equals x to the 1 fourth, and all of a sudden this fractional exponent may be making you a little sad. So I'm going to go ahead and do 3x plus x to the 1 fourth. And all of a sudden, I notice a problem. These are not like terms because we know in order to have like terms, we need the same variable to the same degree. So my final answer is just 3x plus x to the 1 fourth power. Of course, if we want to, we know x to the 1 fourth is equivalent to the fourth root of x. 
so you could write it either way. If I'm subtracting these two, the same thing kind of comes into play. I have 3x minus x to the 1 fourth. Once again, these are not like terms, so my final answer is just 3x minus x to the 1 fourth power. So remember, in order to add or subtract, we need the same variable to the same degree. Just like if we're adding or subtracting radicals, and a lot of you guys missed this in your homework, um, I need the same index number with the same radicand because that is really connected to exponent and base. Okay, so it's kind of that same concept where that stuff needs to be the same in order for me to add or subtract. Multiplying here, okay, I have 3x times x to the 1 fourth power. And there's actually two different ways we could do this. And I'm going to start with the general way that is going to work every single time. And then we'll kind of look at the shortcut for this problem and discuss why that would work. I know this is really like x to the first, and whenever I am multiplying things that have the same base, I would add their exponents together. So I really have 3x to the 1 plus 1 fourth power, which is 3x to the 5 fourths power. And all of a sudden, this improper fraction makes me sad because I know that I can simplify that further. So I know this is equivalent to 3 times the fourth root of x to the fifth. And this is just like a problem we did in the last lecture where I'm looking for groups of four. Here, I know I have four x's, so I can take one out. And I have one x left over. So my answer is three x times the fourth root of x. Now the reason why I'm saying that this could make you sad is because now my shortcut way, I'm just gonna take three x and I'm going to look at x to the 1 fourth and rewrite that as the fourth root of x. And I end up getting the same exact answer. Now, you guys may wonder why the heck would I ever use this way. And the reason is, the only reason this shortcut method worked is because we were taking x to an integer. If I had a fraction and a fraction here, I would definitely need to use this first method. So when in doubt, use this first method because it will get us to the correct answer. If you notice a shortcut, like if I had 3x, 3x squared, and then times x to an improper fraction, this is definitely the easiest way to go about doing it. Okay, so now we are dividing. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in. So I have 3x divided by x to the 1 fourth power. And I know when I have the same base, we are going to battle, and I'm going to remind myself that this is like x to the first power. So I have 3 times x to the 1 minus 1 fourth power, which is 3x to the 3 fourths power. Once again, if I wanted to, I could write that as 3 fourth root x cubed, but I definitely do not need to. So that's basically all we're going to see with our function operations with addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. Now we're hitting on to composition. Okay, and before we actually get into what composition is, um, I've listed out two functions here. Yay, we have a negative exponent. I'm sure you're excited. Um, but we're going to do a little flashback to chapter 2 when we have something like g of 2. And I know what g of 2 means is that I am going to substitute in 2 wherever there was an x. So in this case, in function g, it was 2x minus 1. I'm taking this 2, and I'm going to replace x with that. And I end up getting 4 minus 1, which is 3. And obviously our homework tonight, unfortunately, is not going to be that simple. But I just want to remind us of what substitution looks like. If you get stuck at any time or are doing something wrong, sometimes it can be helpful to write yourself a simple problem just to emphasize how we use substitution. Okay, so this is what composition really is. It looks kind of crazy. And we would read this as f of g of x. Okay, so when we're reading the problem aloud, that is what we are actually saying. 
And whenever we have a problem like this, we are going to start inside the parentheses. So that means I'm going to replace g of x with 2x minus 1 because that's what this actual um, function is equal to. So now I have something that looks similar. If it said f of 2, all I would do is take function f and replace our x with the 2. In this case, though, it says f of 2x minus 1. So what that is telling me to do is in function f, wherever I see an x, I am replacing it with 2x minus 1. So in this particular example, our original function f is 3 times x to the negative first power. Instead of writing an x in here, I need to write 2x minus 1. So I have 3 times the quantity 2x minus 1 to the negative first power, which would be 3 over 2x minus 1. So notice this is really just using substitution. We just need to go step by step. I'm starting on the inside, replacing that function with whatever it's equal to. Then this is my new um, input value for x. So instead of substituting in an integer or some sort of monomial, we are substituting in a polynomial, like a binomial or a trinomial. Okay, so it can mathematically be a little bit more difficult to simplify, but the substitution is exactly the same. I'm replacing this x with whatever is inside the parentheses. Now let's use those same two functions and do the opposite thing. We're going to do g of f of x. So this time I'm starting inside the parentheses and I'm replacing f of x with 3x to the negative first power. So I have g of 3x to the negative first power. So that means in function g, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with 3x to the negative first. So I'm going to have 2 times x times, or I'm sorry, 2 times x minus 1. Instead of x though, we're replacing it with 3x to the negative first. So I get 6x to the negative first power minus 1, which becomes 6 over x minus 1. Now, I could not combine these two terms because they're not like terms. I also do not have a common denominator, so I cannot combine them. If you really wanted to write it as a single fraction, I would need to write 1 as x over x to get a common denominator, which would become 6 minus x over x. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you can if you want and it would be correct. Composition doesn't get a ton tougher than this. We're going to do one that is going to step it up slightly. Okay, what if it said f of f of x? So that's just kind of crazy because I'm substituting f into f and it's weird, but that's okay. So once again, I started on the inside. I know f of x is 3x to the negative first. So now I'm going to go ahead and back in function f. It was originally 3x to the negative first power. Instead of x, we said we should do 3x to the negative 1. This time, since I have a monomial inside here, I can think of this as 3 times 3 to the negative first times x to the first power. If we remember our exponent rules, 3 to the first times 3 to the negative first becomes 3 to the 0 or 1, so my answer is just x. So the whole purpose here is that I can go ahead and substitute anything into a function. It could be f of x, it could be g of g, it could be whatever the heck we want. So if you're feeling good on this, um, you can stop watching the video now. I'm going to go through one more for those of you that just want a little bit more practice. Okay, so let's do f of g of x. So I'm going to do f of x plus 1. And this means in function f of x, wherever there's an x, I'm replacing it with x plus 1. So instead of x to the negative first power, I'm writing x plus 1 to the negative first power. This was a little bit different than the previous problem we did. Since I have a binomial, I can't just make both of these to the negative first power. So I'm just going to bring that entire 
binomial down into the denominator, and 1 over x plus 1 would be our answer. Okay, g of f of x. So I'm going to do g of x to the negative first power. And that means in function g, wherever there was an x, I'm replacing it with x to the negative first. So I'm going to write x to the negative first plus 1. x to the negative first is 1 over x plus 1. Those are not like terms. I cannot combine them. So that would be my final answer. So hopefully you're feeling kind of good on this. Definitely, um, this is the toughest thing in this lesson. So if you need extra practice, um, I know the suggested problems are just the multiples of 3, but you could even do more of those if you need some additional help.